Okay, so we started yesterday. I talked about <laughs> He's really looking at it now. Oh, right. Okay. Now, 30 degrees is an angle that can be described whether it's in degrees or in radians. And we talked about what radians was yesterday. The entire distance around the circle is 360 degrees. The circumference of the circle is also known as the distance around the circle, right? And that distance is 2 pi. So what we figured out yesterday is that 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. All right? What the heck happened? It's got a magic show. Let's try that again. Try to draw your circle again. 360 degrees. Yeah, at least my nice circle. <laughs> All right? That's weird. Okay, so when converting, though, I'm just going to use the ratio of pi radians is 180 degrees. So if I want to find out what 30 degrees is in radians, I times it by pi over 180 degrees. And I leave, just like when we worked with square roots last year, we left the roots as is if they couldn't be broken down into perfect squares. I'm going to leave the pi as part of my answer. All right? So I have pi over 6 radians. Now what that is, is... Thirty degrees here, but that's also this distance here. And basically what that is, is that's a ratio out of 2 pi. So that's pi out of 6 radians out of a total possibility of 2 pi radians. Now, we do describe it a little bit as arc length, all right? but it's just another way of writing our angle in radian mode. Okay? Now, I don't necessarily have to have pi. I can write that as a, as a number, so if I took pi and I divided by 6, I could write that out, but it's going to give you an irrational number, so a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal, all right? So we like to leave them as pi over 6, because they're what we refer to as exact values, and it's tinier than putting out an unlimited amount of decimals, okay? So that's where we started yesterday. Then what we did is we moved into the graph of y equals sine x and the graph of y equals cos x. So I'm going to do that again. All right? Okay. My radius is 1. So that makes this coordinate here 1 and 0. Okay, we also established yesterday that if I look at the cos ratio, it's going to give me my x value. If I look at the sine ratio, that gives me my y value of the coordinates. Okay, we always start along this axis, so that's zero degrees right there. That makes this 90 degrees here, 180 degrees here. 270 degrees right here, and then once around the circle, it'd be 360 degrees. Then the values start repeating themselves. So when we looked at sine and cos yesterday, and you're gonna, you're going to, when we work with this in pre-calculus, you have to do this. Can you not brush your hair right now, please? Thank you. When you work at this in pre-calculus, you have to draw these graphs without the use of technology. But they're fairly simple because you've only got five key points that you have to worry about. So for example, if I'm looking at y equals sine theta, 
All right? I'm talking about the y values of the coordinates going around. So at zero degrees, my value is zero, right here. At 90 degrees, one. At 180 degrees, zero. 270, minus one, and 360, back to zero again. So my graph looks like this. It is called a periodic function because it repeats itself. When does it repeat itself? 360 degrees or every 2 pi. Okay? So I started right here and I end up going all the way around this circle and that's what all of these values come from around that circle. Now if I look at cos theta, what's the x value at 0 degrees? 1. At 90? 180? 270? And back to 1. Notice I put the arrows on them meaning it goes forever left and right. Okay. So your domain for both of these graphs is the same thing. What's your domain for these graphs? X is an element of all reals. X is an element of all reals. My range is also the same for both of these graphs. How low does it go? Negative 1. How high does it go? Plus 1. There's your range. From negative 1 to plus 1. Okay? Then we added in some terminology. We added in some terminology from yesterday. Amplitude. Midline. So amplitude is the maximum distance from the midline to your top or the midline to your bottom. It's a distance, so it's a positive value. So what's your, what's your amplitude in either one of those equations right now? One. That's the distance from here to here. That's what your amplitude is. You can solve your amplitude by taking your maximum, adding it to your minimum, and dividing it by two. Maximum divided by your minimum divided by two. Your midline is the equation of the line that divides it into two equal parts. It's very similar to what? What have we done before where you added? You divided it. Yes, exactly. Axis of symmetry. Same thing. My midline equation is exactly what this is. That's how I get my midline. Okay? These are new. Sorry, go ahead. Can your y intercept be greater? So then, say, like your. Um, my y intercept or my midline? That your like, line. Mm -hmm. Could it be higher? Actually? Yes. Could it be like 2? Yes. Like yes, it can move up and down. We're gonna get, I'm going to get back into that right away, okay? This was not given to you yesterday. We didn't talk much about it, but I'm going to talk about it today. My period for these graphs. <coughs> if I have no other values, it's just 360 or 2 pi. But there is a way to calculate my period. When given the equation, I take 360 degrees and I divide it by B. When given the equation in radians, I take 2 pi and divide it by b. That's how I get period. This is new today. We did not do this yesterday. Okay, so I'll explain that a little more when I talk about the equations. So I've got amplitude, I've got period, I've got my midline. That's the fourth thing I need. I have it on my cheat sheet. Yeah, you have your Intercepts we talked about, the midline, the graph. 
That should be good. Okay, now, for a sinusoidal graph, again, brand new to you, okay? For a sinusoidal graph, the standard equation is as follows. A sine B X minus C add D. Now, the, the lousy part about this, you writing any of this down? Where? Okay. The lousy part about this is this is not the equation that will be given to you when you do your regression graphs. When you do your regression graphs on your calculator, it will be A sine BX plus C is in the brackets. We always want to factor the B out. Always. So we'll talk about that when we look at regression graphs. All right, so now... How does this equation affect my standard equation right here? The A value. The A value stands for amplitude. If I make it 3, that means then that this value right here goes up to 3 and down to negative 3 down here. Okay? So I'm just going to move this over 1 here. So let's have a look at this. Y equals 3 sine theta. So what's going to change then from my standard graph is I put my five points in. You're going to get good at this. Trust me. You just put your five points in for sine. My maximum then becomes 3. My minimum becomes negative 3. That's how that affects it. So A is your amplitude. That stretches your graph. You're timesing all your Y values by A. We've done that before. Did that with parabolas. The B, I talked about right here. The B affects the graph by changing your, your period. So if I have Y equals sine 2, Theta. That means my B value is a 2. So instead of this being 360 degrees right here, it becomes 180 degrees. I divide all my X values by that value. So I take 360 and I divide it by 2, whatever the B value is. So what's B? B is just a, any value. It's a coefficient. Oh, so you can do anything? Anything. Okay. Okay? Now, just a second. Right? This is not necessarily as important for this class as it is the other class. But I am showing you how it works. Okay? Because when we do regression, you still got to know what A, B, C, and D are. So I'm going to explain what they do. Okay? But we don't need it, at, if not as important as when we work through it in the other class. Go ahead, Ray. So when you're writing out, it's like sine. Or whatever. A is in front of the sign and then the yeah, that's right. B is behind the sign. It's in always in front of the angle. Yes. So whether that's an X or a theta, or whatever. The B value, Rory just said this. The B value is always found directly in front of that theta value. Okay? Now C, C is the shift. It's called a phase shift. It moves all of your points left or right. Okay? And I'll make it make a little more sense in a second here. So if I go y equals sine theta minus 90, let's say. Okay, so I've got sine theta minus 90. Like that. I move every one of my coordinates over 90 degrees. So this one that was down here goes right here. Then right here. And right there. 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 So this is over 90 degrees. So I've taken this whole green graph 
and I've moved it over 90 degrees that way. Okay, so that C moves it left to right. Where have you seen this before? That's the equation of y equals x squared, correct? If I have y equals x minus 2 squared add 3. What does that 2 do to the graph? Moves it left to 2. Moves it? Yeah. Where is it located? It's in the brackets with which? Your x. <clears throat> Plus. Right? What's my vertex? Do you remember this from last year? Uh, two, and three. two and three. So where have I moved it to? Over. Over two to the right and up three to right here. <clears throat> so that basically is my C value. That's basically my D value on a sine graph. Works the same, exact same way. H and K were my vertex. We learned that last year. So I moved it right or left because of H, and I moved it up or down because of K. Well, I'm doing the same thing here. C moves it left or right, D moves it up or down. Okay, so D. Now, with this, my midline now changes with the D value. My midline for any one of these equations is Y equals D. That is the equation of my midline now. All right. I can change this to this. And all that's going to change is where my starting point is. And started, instead of starting at 0 and 0, I started 0 and 1. Because that's my coast graph. That's the difference between sine and coast. Now let's go back and let's have a look. Well, sine graph started here, went there, 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 and there, right? My coast graph started up here and went to there. That's the difference between sine and coast. Sine starts at 0 and 0. Coast starts at 0 and 1 at its maximum. Why? Because of the circle. Cos at 0 degrees is 1. Cos at 90 degrees is 0. Cos at 180 is negative 1. If you don't believe me, you can punch that into your calculator and it'll tell you that. If you put in cos of 0 degrees into your calculator, sorry, yeah, cos of 0, you'll get an answer of 1. You put the cos of 90 in, you'll get an answer of 0. That's all in your calculator. Okay, Emma, did you have a question or did I answer it? Uh, no. Like the midline? Yes. Um, That's this guy right here. That's that guy. So it's from like... It's halfway between your, your peak and your valley. Okay. It's the halfway point. So it's this way or... Okay. It's this way. Okay, okay. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So if you're in, in order to find the midline, you have to get the amplitude and then divide it by... Yeah. Like know, the, yeah, total, yes, the total amplitude and then divide. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that basically summarizes everything that we need up to eight four. But let's let's have a look and let's kind of go through a bit of yesterday's. Um, let's start on page two hundred eight for right now. Or let's do two hundred nine. Let's how about we do that. Okay, so 209 says, is each graph a graph of y equals sine x, y equals cos x, or neither? So in A, which one is it? 1A, how come it's cos? What, can, what gave it away? It starts at the 1, exactly right. Yeah. How about B? It's cos again. Now, because I said that it starts at 1, 
But the next one doesn't start at 1, does it? Where does it start at? 2. But if that's its maximum value, that's a coast graph. That's a coast graph. Okay? Because it starts at its maximum at 0 degrees. See? Neither. Neither. It's a parabola. And D? Sine graph. Because it starts at 0 and 0. All right. No, it has to be at its maximum value. Okay. It has to be at its maximum. The peak has to start at zero. Okay. Now, let me uh, I, I try not to go too far with this, but I sometimes think that if I explain a few things, I can make it make more sense to you. One of the things that... <coughs> You'll notice that they call them sinusoidal functions. Sinusoidal might, means either you can write it as a sine graph or a coast graph. That's what sinusoidal means. All right? So let's say then that I'm just going to put this here. 2, negative 2. Okay? So that, that equation could be y equals 2 sine theta. And I, I'm sorry, I use theta all the time for my, just, you can have x as well. y equals sine 2x is, or 2 sine x is fine. I just use theta because I want it, I want you to understand that it's radian measure. Okay? So my maximum value, my maximum value is 2, my minimum value is negative 2. What's my amplitude in this question? 2. Right? What's the equation of my midline in this question? Okay. Two minus two divided by two. Which is what? Zero. Zero. Where's my midline on curve? Oh. Where's my midline? Zero. What's the y value along this line? Zero. So that's my midline. My midline is y equals zero for this equation. So let's look at one of the things we had to do. Amplitude was two, right? My midline was y equals zero. What's my period for this function? When does it start repeating itself? 360 degrees. So my period is 360 degrees. The domain for this, x and element of all reals. My range, um, lowest is negative 2, highest is plus 2. <coughs> Anybody not following any of this? We're okay. All right. Now, here's the thing. I can write this equation differently and still end up with the exact same graph. If I wrote this equation, y equals 2 cos <coughs> theta minus 90, that's going to give me the exact same graph. What you're going to figure out is that there is an unlimited number of equations that you can put to get the same graph. Unlimited. All you change is your C value. And you can have whatever equation you want. Because think about it. My coast graph normally starts right here, doesn't it? On my maximum. If I move it over to here, Move it right 90 degrees. What do I have? I have a coast graph. Again, it just keeps going. Okay? So there are multiple, an infinite number, not multiple, but an infinite number of answers or solutions when I ask you for an equation of a graph. The A will never change. The B will never change. The D will never change. They will always be the same. What's my A? 2. What's my B? 1. What's my C? 
0 here, 90 here. What's my D? 0. Okay, so the A, the B, and the D won't change. Now, I'm just basically prepping you for what's to come. All right? Let's have a look at uh, the example question on page 210. The graph of a sinusoidal function is shown. Describe the graph by determining its range, the equation of its midline, its amplitude, and its period. Okay, what's the range for this graph? That's like the example? Of the example. The range of the the range. Um, x, I mean, y equals, is less than or equal to 8, <laughs> or, but also greater than or equal to minus 4. Right. Now, I'm going to clean that up. Rory got it right. She said the graph goes less than or equal to 8, greater than or equal to negative 4. When I write this out, I prefer to write it always as smallest to largest. Because when you do this notation, what do you put first? Your smallest. What do you put next? Your largest. So I would have written it like this. Negative 4 is less than or equal to y, meaning y is greater than negative 4, right? But it's also less than 8, where y is an element of all reals. There's your two ways to write your range. To me, I'm more consistent if I always write smallest to largest. Because this one you have to. This one is your lowest point. That's your highest point. So when I write it here, I would say negative 4 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 8. That means that my y values are all in between negative 4 and 8 on that graph. Okay? Stop me if I'm going too quick. What's the equation of the midline of this graph? It's an equation. I'm asking you for an equation, not a numerical value. Um, what is it? 8 plus negative 4 divided by 2? Yeah, which is what? Y equals 2. That's exactly right. 8 plus negative 4 is 4, right? 4 divided by 2 is 2. You did it right. Good job. Okay, what's the amplitude on this graph? Six. From your midline to your top. If my midline is two and my top is eight, what's that distance? Six. So my, my amplitude for this graph is six. Okay? What's the period of this graph? Um, one, two, three, 90? Mm -hmm. Before it repeats itself. Right. right. Okay. 180. You think 180? No, it's down here. No. 270. Classic. Okay. Here's what I suggest you do. What's the two most obvious coordinates on that graph to start with? What would be the two most obvious? The two peaks, right? No, no. The, so you, your graph, I'm looking at, I, this is going to be poorly drawn, but I can see these two peaks right here, right? Okay, what's the x value of this peak? The X, X value. value. Less than 180. Um, <coughs> maybe 120 ish. We're going up to 60, 120, 180. Yeah, so it's 120. So that peak is 120 and 8. What's this one? 360 and 8. Does everybody follow what I'm doing here? I'm just. Checking it out on the x value of the graph, right? To me, that's the two easiest. I go from peak to next peak. That's my period. 
So subtract those two. What's my period for this graph? 240. My period, it repeats itself every 240 degrees. <coughs> right? So there can be like a negative, right? Sorry? There can be a negative period, like if it goes... You can't have a, you can't have a negative period. This, sorry, I never did this, but your period's an absolute value. It's a distance. But you can use the negative numbers to get your period. Okay. Okay? So it's an absolute value. I should have added that here. Let me just go back here. I want you to see this. This should be this. You should have an absolute value, meaning it's always going to be positive. That's what that means. Okay? All right? Now, not asked in this question, but we are going to attempt it. Just because. From that information, from that information, I want to come up with an equation. Okay? You don't need to do this. You will if you're taking the pre-calc, but right now you don't need to do this. So I'm going to show you how each piece fits into the equation. The first thing I'm going to do, y equals. Now it says sinusoidal, so I can use a sine equation or a cos equation. To be honest with you, if it does not go through 0 and 0, I almost always use cos because I can always tell where my top coordinate is, my first coordinate. So I'm going to go like this, A cos B x minus C add D. Again, don't write this down, don't write this down, just watch so that you can piece this together. What did I calculate my A to be in this question? Six. So I've got Y equals six cos. I've got to get my B value. I've got to get my B value. Well. My period is found by taking 360 degrees over whatever B was. So to get my B value, I take 360 degrees and divide it by my period, which in this case is 240 degrees. I just switch these two. Just switch them. Okay, so my period for this question we decided was 240. So I'm going to switch it out so I can find out what B is in my equation. So 36 over 24 is what? 3 over 2, right? So 1.5. So I've got this. 1.5x <laughs> minus blank. What was my midline? 2. So my D value is 2. So now, all that I need to do is find out where this coast graph started at its maximum compared to where it was supposed to. Normally, it starts right here at its maximum, correct? But my first maximum value is where? At 120. So I can put my C value in here as 120 degrees. Because that's where it started. It started right here at its maximum value. Now, here's the thing. I have an infinite number of these. I could have also put this guy in there. So I could have put 360 in there and still got the exact same equation. Okay? The most important thing that you need to take from this for the applied course, right there, know that your amplitude goes in front, know how to get your period, your B value, okay? C and D we'll worry about later. So period is your B value? or No, my period is 360 over my B value. Hmm. And if I if I can see my B value on my if I can see the period on the graph, then I use it to calculate what my B is. Okay? So again, this is above what is necessary for you right now, but I'm trying to tie it in so that it will make more sense to you. 
This is the hardest thing that you would have to do. You are going to be able to use your regression on your calculator in order to solve that, as opposed to doing it without calculator work. Okay? All right, let's have a look again. Let's look at... Let's look at the first... Actually, no, let's go right to... Eight, yeah, let's go to eight four. Okay, so page two sixteen. All right. So it says consider the function y equals three cos two x minus forty five degrees plus two, where x is measured in degrees. Describe the graph of the functions by stating the amplitude, equation, the midline, range, period, horizontal, translation of y equals cos x, and so on. Okay. So I'm going to write this out. y equals 3 cos... Is it 2? x minus 45 degrees plus 2. Is that right? Okay. So this is the standard practice. This is what I would... Like, say to you to do in pre calculus when we do this. First thing you do is go like this A, B, C, D. Write out what those coefficients are. So, what is my A value? 3. My B value? C value? D value? Okay. So, let's describe what I've just done to my y equals coast graph. Let's describe what I've done to y equals cos x. All right? So what does my a do to the graph? <coughs> right. So stretches it. I multiply everything by 3, right? So my amplitude is 3. What's b do to the graph? Right. So that changes my period. I take 360 and I divide it by my B to get my period. So when is it going to repeat? Every 360 divided by 2. So every 180 degrees it's going to repeat. My C value. I'm moving the entire graph 45 degrees to the right. My D value is what? Up and down, but what does it give me? My midline. Okay? So, let's look at this graph then. What's my midline? Let's start with that. What's my midline? Y equals 2 is my midline. I'm asking you for an equation, not a number. Right? So, I want Y equals 2. Now, if Y equals 2 is my midline, Morgan, Y equals 2 is my midline, and my amplitude is 3, how high up does the graph go? Five. How low does it go? Very good. You just described to me my range. What's the lowest? And the highest? Well done. Add three to it. Subtract three from it. That takes you to your lowest and your highest. So my range for this graph is negative one to five. Okay, what did I say my period was for this graph? 360 degrees over 2. What does that make? So it's going to repeat itself every 180 degrees. That's my period. Okay, where does it start compared to the normal graph? Excellent. 45 degrees to the right. Because my C value moves everything right 45 degrees. So okay. That it just Sorry? So say it like, if that's a 1, if it's like x minus 1, mm -hmm. you just keep it the same? Or yeah. Like nope. Just keep it the same. Okay. okay. Question or stretch? I have a question. Sure. Um, so the x value, it's all in degrees now and not like regular values? 
It's in degrees, but it could be in radians as well. Okay. So, in other words, if this was if this was radians, I take two pi and I divide it by two, which means it would repeat pi, which is the same as 180 degrees. So then, how would you move it 40? Like, how would you know move it 45 degrees? I would radians change. I, the okay. question would give you pi over four instead of oh. 45 degrees. Okay. That's a very good question. All right. So I would this this would read x minus pi over four instead of because that's what 45 degrees is in radians. And then then I have to find my period in radians. So that's a good question. Okay. We all right? Eight five is on uh, regression, so I'm going to leave it. You got yeah. lots to do here to kind of catch up. Yeah. Then, like, if you're doing radian and you're, like, trying to find the period, you would do 2 pi, pi divided by 2? That's right. Okay. That's exactly correct. Okay. okay. <coughs> All right. Uh, question 6 on page 214 was drawing some of these. You can use technology to draw them. All right. But if you're sketching them, you may not want to use technology for it. It kind of gives you the values that you need and what you want to do. Okay? All right. Eight, two, page 209, we did the one question on there that they had. 8.1, did we get done 8.1 yesterday? Yes, no? Those over here? Yeah? Okay, so you should be on 8.3 then today. Well, we right. two. Why are you skipping with two? Eight two is just the one question we just did. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right.